We're going to talk a little bit about change this morning. Change is a constant, and that's kind of weird, but it's true. Change is a constant. From the day we're born, every day is a day closer to getting into heaven. You don't have to say death. That's kind of a downer, you know? And so we want to think about the good things that God is doing in our lives, in our church, in the school. Every Saturday, Becky and I come from Tampa, and, and we drive, and we just keep thinking, that new building's going to be there. But I go and reflect on the children's message, and it's block by block by block by block. Well, this morning, I want to share with you just some things that I've read recently. Technology is always changing. Who remembers many years ago, as a kid, I would earn some money, I would go to the drugstore. It wasn't CVS, it wasn't Walgreens, it was one of those brick and mortar stores. Now, now listen to me, even the words brick and mortar, why do we even say that? Because there's so many options now. Amazon is here. And so at first you would go on Amazon and, and, and you would have to, you know, you'd click and that was fine. It'd take a week or so to get here, whatever you're ordering. And now it's gone down to a couple of days. Now it's an hour. I can't believe it. This past uh, Christmas we were up in uh, the Baltimore area uh, where two of my grandkids live. And he just turned 18 last uh, October. And, and his parents got him this thingamajobby. See, that's the technical term. If you don't know what it's called, it's a thingamajobber. It, it's a VR. I had to ask Garrett. But it, it's this thing that you put on and, and you download all kinds of stuff. I mean, you can watch movies. You can watch YouTube. All this kind of stuff. And so my grandson, he downloaded some things that you, you are right there. I mean, when you have this thing on, you are right there. And so he got Gigi, which is Becky, to put him on, and he downloaded some fun things, spiders and snakes and iguanas. Okay, there weren't iguanas in there. But see, you're watching this person. It was great fun because she's sitting on the, and she's swatting things this way and that way, and she's moving around and running. It was great fun for everyone. Just ask her. But you know what? That technology is now being used to help people to become calm. That technology now is not just about scary things or exciting things. It's the beach. It's this calming thing. And so that's fantastic. That's great. And with anything new like that, you know somebody's going to find a way to make a lot of money. So there's this company in China. It's kind of like the Amazon, except for in China. It's great. It's worldwide. And so they're going to give you one of these VR thingies. Thingamajobs. Can you say that? Everybody, thingamajob. Okay, it'll help you remember. And so here's what they're doing. They, they have this whole mall, and you walk through it. And it's more than Amazon just on the screen. I mean, you're walking through it, and you're picking out things. No more clicking. When you want something, all you have to do is focus on it. That little green box comes around, whatever you want. All you have to do is nod. I read that, and I said, not me. I just think, here I am. I'm walking into that jewelry store. All of a sudden, I start sneezing. Achoo, achoo, achoo. I just spent $50,000. I mean, come on. Now, I say all that because it's easy to see change in technology. But change happens all the time. Change happens to us. Change happens to organizations. Change happens to church families. Change happens to church schools. There are staff changes. And so we as a congregation are going to celebrate with Brooke and Garrett and Marin and Corinne on the new adventure that God is calling them to. Amen? Say it like you mean it. And pray for Parkway Christian Church because God has something planned for Parkway Christian Church. Amen? Amen? You see, we don't see the full picture. You know, we, we, we can't move all the pieces where they're supposed to be, but God can. I want you to know, I want you to get out your, your bulletin outline here, 
And I want you to know, this scripture was picked out weeks ago. Uh, weeks ago. And, and I just really believe this is the scripture for Parkway Christian Church on this morning. So listen as I read from the book of Philippians. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the church at Philippi. This is the Apostle Paul writing to you. It's the Apostle Paul writing to Parkway Christian Church. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. So Paul's saying there's more. None of us are there yet. We won't be there until we graduate to heaven. But I press on. So again, this idea that we are intentional, we are moving forward. To possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. I, I like that phrasing because normally when we think about being possessed, it's a negative thing. But he says, possessed by Jesus. But I focus on this one thing. The title of the message is focus. What grabs our attention? What are we intentionally focusing on? But I focus on this one thing. Forgetting the past, letting go of the past. Letting go of the past and looking forward, looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on. There it is again. That's being intentional. That's being active. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. If you're here this morning and you're breathing, let me just say, you are here this morning, you are breathing, you don't have to answer those questions, then God has a call on your life. Today. Tomorrow and until we graduate heaven, and that's a good thing. Let all who are spiritually mature, I love how Paul phrases this, agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress we have already made. I, I take it that Paul, he's kind of like saying, you know what? We're never going to agree on every little thing. But on the important things, even though I'm not going to argue, but God's going to make it plain to you. You know what? Christians do that. We get sometimes all bent out of shape on things that are minor and we forget the things that are major. Have you ever had a discussion with somebody like that? You know what? In the Middle Ages, they had these big debates over how many angels would fit on the head of a pen. Wow. I think that's kind of interesting. I wonder what kind of numbers they came up with. I don't know. Well, today we argue over anything and everything. We argue the end times and when will Jesus come and, and all this kind of stuff. Here's my philosophy. If you do, if I do, if we do, what we're supposed to be doing right now today, we're ready anytime. Amen? So we don't want to miss out on what God is doing. Here's what I want you to write down on your bulletin. And the important thing is not that you get all these blanks correct. The important thing is you write down what God is saying to you this morning by His Spirit. Please put it in. We are not there yet. None of us are perfect. So, get the biggest smile you can on your face because we say things in love, right? Amen? Say it in love. And look at somebody and say, you're not all that. Just go ahead. You're not all that. You're not all that. You're not all that. You're, I mean, you think you are, but you're not. I don't mean that. You don't say What may be meant as an insult is actually a good thing. Because we need to understand God has more for each one of us. And He has more for us as families. And He has more for us as a church family, being part of His kingdom. Okay, please put it down. Our focus is forward-looking. Our focus is forward-looking. Think about the children's story. It takes a lot to build a building. It takes a lot to build a church. It takes a lot to build a school. And all of us can be a part of that. Brick by brick, share by share. I think back, we watched some of you Sunday. By the way, people said, well, where have you and Becky been the last two Sundays? Come on, where have you been? They were, I mean, they're kind of mean about it. No, I'm just kidding. We have been packing because we are moving from Tampa Bay to Tampa Bay. Just, you know, a little bit further north, closer to our grandkids. And so we have packed and packed and packed and, and it wasn't fun. But we did it because it needs to be done. But our focus is forward-looking. 
instead of being 50 minutes to an hour away from our grandkids, we'll be 10 minutes away. So, amen. Amen. All right. I want you to put this down. Possessed by Jesus. Possessed by Jesus. What is it that catches your attention? What is it that you focus on? I, I've kind of been amazed. I always think I, I won't be amazed at things, but I still am. Over the last few weeks, I, I was watching at one of the news programs, and, and they said, this is a worldwide phenomenon. And I said, oh my, what's happening? It's the last season of Game of Thrones. I've never seen it. You know, we don't have any of the pay-per-view stuff, so I, I didn't know what was going on. I thought I'd missed out. And then, now, I, I like sports, but when did the NFL draft become a thing, a three-day marathon? It's now a thing. Maybe it's been a thing. I don't know. We are possessed as a culture entertainment. And, and not, a, not all of us bad or anything, but it brings us back. What possesses us? Now, if you know anything, what happened this past week in movie wise? Some of you are shaking your head. Some of you aren't. The Avengers, the end game. And I like superheroes. Worldwide release over one billion dollars. I think you guys should ask them for a little bit of fundraising. I mean, I mean, what's a few hundred thousand when it's one billion? Now, again, I'm not saying that's bad or wrong, but I am asking us to reflect. What is, okay, <laughs> maybe some of you were there, but they showed lines of people for this movie, and I, teenagers okay, maybe young adults, there were people 50s and 60s all dressed up in costumes waiting for the movie, in line overnight and all kinds of stuff. If you were one of them, I don't mean to step on your toes, but it was quite hilarious. Here's what I'm saying. We need to look in the mirror and say, what is catching my attention? What am I focused on? And where's God in all of that? And what really makes a difference? My prayer is that we're possessed by a desire to love others as God loves us. My desire is that our prayer is, Lord, what can I do to help? What can I do to help in my church family? What can I do to help in the church school? What can I do to make a difference for the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Sometimes people are possessed by the past, and we'll talk about that. Sometimes people are possessed by an anxiousness in life. So Brooke said I would talk about it, so I will. Max Lucado, new study, anxious for nothing. And it's not a quick fix. It's not a one, two, three, and you'll never be anxious again. But he's quite honest about saying as Christians, we're not immune. As churches, we're not immune. We get anxious. How do we deal with it? And he has an acronym. It's CALM. Just everybody say CALM. 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 The C stands for celebrate God's goodness. Because the first thing we do that makes us anxious, we are focused on the wrong thing. We are focused on the problem. We are focused on the what ifs of life, what might happen, and so on and so forth, and it snowballs. And the first thing we need to focus on as Christians is on the goodness of God. Veggie Tales is excellent. It's wonderful theology. The song is sung. God is bigger than the boogeyman. If you haven't heard that song, then get on your phone. Ask Google. It'll play it for you. New technology. But for us... As individuals, as family, we always come to God first because He is bigger. We don't need to focus on how big the problem is. We need to focus on how big God is. The second, calm. How do you spell calm, anybody? A is the next letter. Okay, good, thank you. We ask God throughout Scripture. Ask God, ask God, ask God. And so we're going to do that. We're going to ask God to help us to get through the day. We're going to ask God to help us see his will, His design. We're going to do it as individuals, as families, and as a church family, and as a school family. All right, C-A-L. We're going to leave it in God's hands. Now, prayer is not an excuse to be irresponsible. We are going to do all that we know to do and believe that God wants us to do. But ultimately, we're saying, God, we're not in control. And so we're leaving this in your hands. When you take the car to the mechanic to get it fixed, do you lean over his shoulder and tell him what to do? If you do, they charge you more. Just so you know. 
Not that I've ever done it. But we're honestly, we're saying, Lord, we are going to do all that we know to do, and we're going to be diligent, we're going to work hard, we're going to press on, but ultimately, it's in your hands. And the M is for meditating on things that are good. Sometimes we get anxious because we allow our brains to go from zero to a million about the what-ifs in life. And so we're going to take very seriously His Word to meditate things that are good, things that are valuable, things that are worthwhile, so on and so forth. You'll learn more today at 1, tomorrow at 10.30, and Wednesday nights at 7. Here we go. Oh, I forgot. I, I, it's in your bulletin, but everyone is invited. We're having a pizza party after church today. I uh, came in after the first service, and I smelled this wonderful smell. It's pizza dough being cooked. Carbohydrates are a good thing. I know they tell you they're not, but oh my. They're almost as good as ice cream. Okay. So anyway, if this is your first time here or whatever, you're welcome to come. It's a time to get to know people, time to talk together in fellowship. All right, we need to let go of the past. What do I mean? Two things. Please put both these down because they're both important. Tragedies and trophies. Tragedies and trophies. A lot of times in life we think, oh, we just need to let go of the tragedies. Well, guess what? We need to let go of the trophies too. Just a couple things about tragedies. I, I met with a, a lady in the church I, I pastored in Tampa after I'd been there just a few months, and, and she told me uh, about the fact that her parents had been killed in a, uh, an accident and so on and so forth. And, and we, we continued to talk and talk for 30, 40. I don't know how long it was. And, and I began to, because she was very emotional about it and so on and so forth. And, and I, thought, I said, well, you know, how long ago did this happen? I thought it was the previous year. It was 20 years ago. Now, we will always have a hole in our heart to some degree over loss. But we also say our lives move forward and the very ones that we love and are grieving over would want us to move forward in our relationship with Christ. Amen? In life. And so for all of us, if, if you're there, it's not that we're saying forget them, but we're saying keep moving forward in the life that God has for you today. Today. I want to share Lily's story with you. She grew up in a... Not even going to go into all the details, but it was a very broken home. It was a very harsh home. And, and so as she grew up, uh, lots of things going on, and, and she her coping mechanism was alcohol. And, and she shared that freely. And, and it wasn't until in her 50s that, that she turned her life over to Christ and, and she started going to AA and, and her life dramatically changed. And she said, you know, at the one-year mark, I've been sober for a year. It was the longest she'd ever been sober in her whole life. And, and she said she got up that morning and, and she, she expected to feel great and wonderful and she said she just didn't because she couldn't get away from this thing in her brain that said, you're a disappointment to God. But because she kept thinking... I've traded my life with God for alcohol. I've traded my family for I've traded my life. Well, she said, I, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to go to the prayer group tonight. She was through her church, and it was at somebody's house. And, and on the way in, she, this lady came up to her and said, listen, I want, to have, you know, I want to give you this gift. And she gave her a package of gel pens with erasers. And she said to her, she said, she said I don't know you, but I just feel like God wants me to give you this gift. And she said, the pens are unique because you can write and then you can erase your mistakes. It's kind of like with God's grace. He forgives us so we have a clean slate. She went in and she told the other group members, hey, do we have a new member? Do we, is somebody new? And they didn't know anything about it. And so at the end of that Bible study, like that prayer time, they got out their notebooks because they would journal each week. And they said, just write down whatever it is in your relationship between you and God. And she started to write down, I'm a disappointment. I've wasted my... I mean, all these negative, negative, negative things. And God is so good by her own testimony. She said she heard not an audible voice, but erase it, erase it, erase it, erase it. And she was so thankful. She, she took that gel pen that had the eraser and she started erasing, erasing. And she felt like God was saying, you have a clean slate, clean slate. Start over, start over. And then she wrote, I am forgiven. God loves me. I am a child of God. And that helped her to move on in her relationship and in her life. 
I don't know about you, but there may be something that we look back on and we keep beating ourselves up for it. And God is saying to you today, move forward. You know what? It's not just about those kind of things. It's about decisions made in families, in churches. And maybe you think, well, this shouldn't happen and that shouldn't happen. Well, it did, whatever it is. And so we move forward. Do I hear an amen? No, 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 no. Do I hear an amen? Amen. Amen. Absolutely, positively. Here we go. Now, trophies are kind of a fun thing. Becky and I were were packing up this past two weeks, and um, we found lots of things. Our daughter has been very specific with us. Don't leave all your junk. (laughs) She's so kind. Has a way with words, like her dad, I guess. Anyway, she said, hey, you get rid of stuff. We, you know, her, our son, her brother and I, we don't want to have to go through all that stuff. She used a different word, but that's okay. Now, and it wasn't that one. Anyway, I found papers that I'd written in college. I found papers I'd written in seminary. Now, I only saved the ones that I got an A on. Those might have been few and far between, but those are the only ones. And I thought to myself, okay, if I don't want to read them, who else would? So they're gone. I had, I I opened up my my folder that had Discover Card on it. Ten years of receipts. I'm thinking, I don't need that. For all of us, let's do some inventory. Are there things in our lives that we need to let go of and say, Lord, help me. I need to move on. Dr. James Dobson talks about this in college. Uh, He was on the tennis team. They won all kinds of trophies and all that kind of stuff. He went back to his alma mater. They had this hallway that was filled with trophies from all kinds of sports. And they were doing renovation. Kind of reminds me here, building new stuff. And sometimes when you build new stuff, you have to get rid of some of the old stuff. Portables, per se. Okay, so he he goes in there and he sees a janitor. Everything's gone. All of it. And he he asked the janitor, what what have they done with all this? And the janitor kind of smiles smiles and he says to him, well, they're out back. So so he goes out back thinking they've got one of these pod thingies that they're storing them. There were 10 dumpsters. He doesn't say whether he jumped in one to get it or not, but the point was, even in the trophies and the good things, we can celebrate, but we let go. We let go. Just because something was good 10 years ago doesn't mean it will work today. Amen? We're constantly saying, Lord, we don't want to relive the past. We want to live today. We want to be effective today. We want to love today. Have you ever talked with somebody that within five minutes they're talking about the glory days? And you start to wonder now... When were these glory days? And it's a high school or it's a college. And come to find out, they talk about how great their team was. Come to find out, they weren't even on the team. Now, again, just look at your outline. Let's let go of the tragedies and the trophies. And we are going to press on being the person that God wants us to be. One more little story. It's about Bob. Everybody say Bob. Have you seen the movie, What About Bob? Ooh, it's a good movie, good movie. Baby steps. Anyway, here's Bob, and, and he's, he, he's, not, he's not a big man. I mean, he's like five foot five and weighs 120 pounds, soaking wet. But he, he's anxious. He's been his whole life, and, but he wants to serve God. And, and so he found out he's off on Fridays. He found out his church has this hotline, this call line. People call in, and they pray for him, and, and, and that's great. And so he joined that. He did all the training and all that. And and he got this call from a distraught man. He lost his job. He was mad about it. He was mad at the world. Uh, His wife, they just had a a baby a few months ago. And and he said, my wife left me because I don't have any money. Wasn't true. She left because he was angry all the time. She didn't want to be around that and have the baby around that. But, you know, convoluted thinking sometimes. And and so they talk and talk. and, And finally, Bob feels like you know what, we, we need a little bit more than just this phone conversation. Now, he's an anxious guy, and, but, he, but he said he just felt motivated. And, and so he said, you know what, there's this burger joint just, to, just not too far from here. Do you know where it's at? They lived in the same town. He said, yes. And he said, well, can you meet me there in 30 minutes? I'll buy you lunch and we'll talk further and pray together. And the guy said, yes. And, and, and so here's anxious Bob, and he's sitting down there. 
And he's looking at different people come in and he's thinking, man, that'd be good if it's that guy. It'd be good if it's that guy. And he looks normal. You know how we are as, as, as Christians even. So then this guy comes in who is a giant. He could play, play a lineman for the Miami Dolphins or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or the Jacksonville Jaguars. Just Florida teams. Okay, just Florida teams. But he didn't know, should I hide under the table or kind of wave and say, yeah, we're going to meet. He did wave and they met. And he said, after they talked for a long time, he said, I am not your solution, but Jesus is. Would you like to pray? Would you like to ask God to help you through this time? And he said, yes. And so they prayed together and he, and he received Christ right there in that restaurant. It can happen anytime, anyplace, anywhere. And he said, listen, I know things aren't good with you and your wife, so let me take you to the grocery store. We're going to get some groceries. Maybe we'll get some flowers, kind of as a peace offering. And, and, and so the guy said, okay, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Now, they parted ways, and, and Bob, anxious Bob, thought, well, I'll never see the guy again, but I, I, I just, I don't want to get this wrong, so I'm going to read this. After we parted ways, I prayed, Lord, don't you ever do that to me again. Even as Christians doing good things, we're still human beings. He said, I know that's an ugly prayer, but I'm just keeping it real. I thought I'd never see him again. One year later, this is, every story doesn't work out this way. Every good deed you do isn't like this, but it's, that's fine. We do good because God calls us to do good. He's at the gas. Okay, anybody remember when you used to go to the gas station and they came and filled your tank? Change. We don't like it sometimes, but anyway, here it is. He's filling up his gas tank. Somebody taps anxious Bob on the shoulder. What do you think he did? He jumped. Oh, my gosh. He turned around. It's a giant. But it's a giant with a smile. Listen to the end of the story. He was smiling from ear to ear. He told me how God had restored his marriage. He found a job in a church. And Bob says, it amazes me that God could use someone as anxious as me. I'm beginning to understand that God's greatest goal is not to keep me comfortable. That hurts me. I love comfort. I like to be comfortable. But here's his testimony. God's greatest goal is not for his comfort or our comfort. It is to keep us growing, becoming more like Jesus. A guy twice my size reminded me of that. And then he keeps it real. I still pray for courage, and that's a daily prayer that scares me to death. As we come together this morning, as we listen to God's Word, we need to be asking ourselves, what is it that God wants me to do? What action steps do I need to take? We need to let go of the past, including tragedies and trophies. We need to press on and to move forward. And I want you to write this down. Tomorrow is built on what we do today. It's true in our churches. It's true in our marriages. In other words, if you want your marriage to be strong, then guess what you need to do? Spend time together. Talk together. Pray together. If we want the church to be strong, what do we need to do? We need to pray, volunteer. What we do today is what we build for tomorrow. Tomorrow is built on what we do today. Spiritually, marriages, families, churches, schools. And here's the key. Please write it down. We do it together with Jesus. We do it together with Jesus. Here's the application. What did God say to me? It's not just about saying. What do I need to do? Something about the road to some place is filled with good intentions. Now, first of all, I want to tell you that's very poor theology. Okay? But you get the point. It's not just about a vision or a dream. It's about these blocks, whether it's a school or a church or a family, building it step by step, day by day, and it starts today. Lord, what do you want me to do today to become more the person you've envisioned for me to do, to be? Let's pray.